Yada Yahua, hallelujah, it's the first day of the ninth month, which commenced at the dawn on the pagan day of Thursday, December 8th, 2022. Yes, uh, we went through these visuals already in a few other past scriptural study videos. And as we know, the moon greeting the sun at sunrise is not the end all do all witness. It did, however, greet the sun at sunrise uh, this morning in my area, also in Jerusalem on the pagan day of December 8th, Anaheim, California, the same, Memphis, Tennessee, but it did not on Cape Town, South Africa, and Perth, Australia. And as we know, if you do follow the scriptures, uh, it's a dawn day start. That's what the scriptures share. Uh, world traditions and world religious traditions of men all the way back into Egyptian and Babylonian times, obviously, will state otherwise, but the scriptures say a dawn or first light is the true scriptural day start. So with that said, as you can see, if you do that, everybody's on the same page for New Moon Day for the first day of the ninth month on the pagan day of Thursday, December 8th, uh, 2022. That is if you utilize all three witnesses of light, sun, moon, and stars, and you number your days from New Moon to New Moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath. So, Again, pride is concerned with who is right. Humility is concerned with what is right. So the humble approach, it's challenging. It can be hard-pressed. And as such, it's a lot of work. You cannot have a Laodicean mindset. You can't have a mindset where you think you can simplify this and dumb this down for your own needs. Don't follow human beings that do that. Look at all of the witnesses because there are wonders, as the psalmist stated, and why our being observes them. So, this is a two-dimensional view. If you watched the previous video on perspective, this is looking up from the face of the earth. And if you're looking down, you'll see a clockwise motion. If you're looking up, you'll see a counterclockwise motion. We've been covering this for years in the scriptural uh, workshops. A day starts Bukhar, Shakar at the dawn, first light, right to sunrise, and this is why we rise before the dawn and Shua for help all the way through the daylight time period, sunset, into the evening at ebb, first watch, second watch, third watch. So let's talk about that. We're going to go through that, focusing on the fourth watch all the way to sunrise for those other countries that we just shared on that template, that worksheet. So here we are in Jerusalem at the dawn, 459, on the pagan day of December 8th, the first day of the ninth month, which again commences at the dawn. And here's the sign. Here's the sign. All three witnesses of light in play. Now, some people say, ah, it's the sun and the moon. Well, wait a minute, that's solar lunar. That's two witnesses. You are taking away, intercalating, if you will, away from the perfect witnesses of light that give us signs that tell us what appointed time in the case of a new moon day or chag we are in. This is the sign for a ninth month. Now there are more stars. I'm just utilizing the scriptural stars. And obviously the moon ruled with more than just Orion. It ruled with Capella, Betelgeuse, and there are some other stars. But if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you also would have seen Ursa Major with the North Star, Arcturus, and speak of the two suns. You would have seen that. And we know this because at first light, everything's in play. As the prophet Hanok had stated, or Enoch, if you get outside at first light and you watch it, starting from that fourth watch, uh, as he said, that light from the sun will rise above upon the moon. If you're waiting for sunrise, you don't get the stars. And as such, you don't get the signs for each and every particular month because the moon rules with a set of specific stars assigned to it for each and every first day of any given scriptural month. The moon did greet the sun at sunrise in Jerusalem. And here are the data for the moon and a fully restored moon, as we can see. And in this case, it was 626 a.m. But again, if you're waiting for a sunrise let alone sunset day starts, and you have any geographical hindrances, such as valleys, mountains, let alone tree lines, or you live in a city, building lines, uh, you're toast. It's not a light on a lampstand at sunrise. If you wait for the second day, it gets into the teens, even then it's problematic. It's not as high as it would have been during a dawn time period. And some people are now 
doing just that. Just to keep that sunrise Egyptian view. Again, don't follow a man. Follow the three witnesses of light. So, here we are in Anaheim, California, at the dawn, first day of the ninth month, pagan day, December 8th, same sign, same sign. So it doesn't change, right? Uh, this is what it means to be steadfast, one of the many reasons to be steadfast. Here it is at the dawn, and first light, where Hanok had stated that the light, the sun, will rise upon the moon and be above it. Again, if you know your stuff, even horizontally from an astronomical standpoint, uh, that sun sometimes does not rise above the moon itself. So again, if you're taking the view from the heavens like Anog did, you do not see sunrises and sunsets. Think about that for a moment. Please take the time to watch the previous scriptural study video we did last evening. So here it is, the moon greeting the sun at sunrise, and you can find the azimuth and the altitude right there, along with the illumination and many other great pieces of information. Remember, this is not my data. This is the father of light's data. When you measure time, you're measuring the speed in which the light moves. And as such, we can monitor it. We can measure it. And again, in Anaheim, if, if you waited for sunrise, it's problematic, but... If you follow men and or women, they're going to tell you to do just this and this alone. It's a shame, but it'll exist for a little while more. There's no doubt about that. We're at peace because the Messiah, Yahushua, and his 144,000 will restore everything that we're sharing here and then some. We're just students. We're still trying to catch up. So here's Memphis, Tennessee, USA. Same sign for a first day, ninth month. If you put in the ground, there's first light, and that light is rising above, shining upon the moon, just as Hanok had stated. And yes, in Memphis, the moon did greet the sun at sunrise at five degrees above the horizon. Very easy to see, but again, it's not a moon that is a light on a lampstand like it is at the dawn. Now, some folks will probably say tomorrow will be the new moon day. December 9th, and that moon will be in the teens, but it still won't be a light on a lampstand like it is at the dawn. So it's a nice little Johnny Carson two-step. It's a nice little jig and dance, but again, you're robbing yourself of the stars, and as such, you are now in a position where hopefully you're not consciously saying that in James chapter 1, verse 17, that the per perfect witnesses of light, sun, moon, and stars, are not perfect. Because if you're taking away from that view, just with a sunrise and or a sunset day start, that is actually what is happening. So because we consider others better than ourselves, we think that this is just a mistake at this point in time. We were caught up in it before 2013. And again, we've repented of that and uh, utilize all of the witnesses of light now. And we're still learning more. So here's that same view. Uh, here we are now in Cape Town, South Africa, and as we said, the moon will not greet the sun at sunrise in this location, but it's a fully restored moon with the same sign. They see less of it. They don't see all of the North Star right there and Ursa Major, but they do see Spica. They will not see Arcturus, and they'll see Orion and the other stars that the moon rules with for a first day, ninth month event, just like it does everywhere. Remember, from a perspective standpoint, from the face of the earth looking up, they're farther away from the North Star, and as such, they see the outer circle, not the inner circle of Ezekiel's wheel. So pretty basic. Again, this is not even teachings. I'm not a teacher. This is just basic kindergarten astronomy. That's all this is. Baby steps, right? So here we are in Cape Town, first light. Light's rising over the moon, and you still see the stars. All three witnesses of light to tell time, including signs that give us the appointed times. Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 to 16, and there it is. The moon did not greet the sun at sunrise in this area, but it's still New Moon Day. We don't get some of these same issues uh, overseas uh, with the assemblies of Bereans there. They look at all three witnesses of light. Usually the uh, challenge with getting folks away from just a lunar solar approach at a day start comes from Americans. It is what it is. 
And overseas people uh, sometimes see the challenges of Americans to be silly. Um, why not look at the whole picture? All three witnesses of light. Now, again, I've noticed that comment. Uh, I'm Canadian. I'm part of America. But when I traveled overseas for work for many, many years, the viewpoint, the perspective from the mindset over there versus here, um, it's always less focused here for some reason. It's very pig-headed, very stiff-necked always want to argue and again if you watch the video from yesterday there's a way to manage that type of controversy and stubbornness and some people call it pride scriptures does anyways so this is Perth Australia and thank you to all the Brians that constantly send us film and photograph footage let alone the wonderful scriptural studies there's the sign same as in Cape Town South Africa same as us, us here in the northern hemisphere and again, Perth did not greet the sun at sunrise. So uh, I, I will include all of these visuals in the description box of this particular YouTube video. And here we are with uh, some shots uh, from Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, for constantly sharing. This uh, was taken between the first and second watch, uh, we believe, based on the height uh, last evening, 30th day of the eighth month. This shot's from my older boy, Matthew. Thank you very much from Saskatchewan, Canada. In the first watch last evening. Wonderful shot. Here's uh, a shot at sunset last evening from Cynthia. Great, great work as always. And your detail to even get the stars is amazing. And how you use the tools to learn this and then be in a position where you don't need them anymore and you know where to look all by your lonesome when you get outside is just wonderful. So thank you. Even with inclement weather, you got a shot of one of the scriptural stars for uh, the night before a first day and ninth month event. And then all the way to sunset, or sorry, sunrise on new moon day. Yes, the moon did greet the sun at sunrise and you got the sunrise shot as well there. Well done, Cynthia. And these shots from Stephen... This individual, his skill sets with a camera are just extraordinary. And he got a picture of a fully restored moon uh, the night before New Moon Day, uh, the 30th day of the eighth month. I think this is around the second going into the third watch. Stephen, correct me if I'm wrong. And some people say, well, you know, a naked eye, you can't make out a 997 percent illuminated moon, 99.8 percent illuminated moon, 99.9 percent .9 illuminated moon versus 100 percent illuminated moon. Well, if you hear people saying this, um, they're just not getting outside and testing and proving. So that's step one. The naked eye can make out the differences. And as you can see here, there's no shadow. There's no shadow on the moon here and it's a fully restored moon and you can see the light like heat like energy glowing off the edges now in a 99.9 .9, you can see some of those discrepancies you won't see what you're seeing here but that takes practice so Stephen thank you for those shots so this view again is two-dimensional looking up from the face of the earth and thus the reason why it moves counterclockwise if you're looking down from the heavens like Hanog did, Enoch, you would see a clockwise motion. So this is why we try to do our best with all dimensional views. Remember, if you're just using a calendar, they call that zero dimensional. So whether you use a pagan Roman Catholic square calendar, or then you invert that, you transpose that onto a circular clockwise or counterclockwise with moon phases, that's what's known as a zero dimensional view. A horizontal view only, sunset and sunrise, is known as a one-dimensional. When you start getting into stellarium, two-dimensional, and then when you get into the other dimension, uh, third-dimensional view, you're looking at the dome shape. You're looking at everything. And we're working hard to improve our visuals to get the third-dimensional view, just like Hanok had seen, because it gives you a better perspective of the esteem of the Almighty Father of Lights and why the expanse in a third dimensional view, you see more clearly the work uh, that's declared from his hand and why day-to-day -day ports for speech and night-to-night reveals knowledge. 
So we're a work in progress. We're not teachers. We're still just scriptural Berean study students. Again, humility. But some people want to tell you, hey, we're it. We know better. Well, we don't. We just share as many of the witnesses as we possibly can. What you do with all those witnesses between you and the Father of Lights, just as it is for me. So, uh, again, a true scriptural day start is at the dawn. The sign of Jonah, or Yonah, chapter 4, verse 7. But as morning, Shikard dawned the next day. They went to the tomb just before the dawn on the first day of the week. 16th day of the first month of Abib. That's when that took place. And the Messiah, Yahushua, went to the temple at the dawn every day. And Hanok knew till the sun rises over against her. And that starts at the dawn, when you can see all three witnesses of light, sun, moon, and stars to give you the signs for the appointed times when the moon is fully restored, a light on a lampstand. And some people are not restored full moon believers. They're waning new moon believers at a um, one-dimensional sunset, or sunrise horizontal view, which is Egyptian and Babylonian. Again, this is not my opinion. This is based in historical and archaeological fact, and it's non-scriptural. It's based on the traditions of men. So again, if you want to follow a man and or a woman, you will ignore all of this. Again, how many millions of Egyptians followed men and women? How many Babylonians did the same thing? How much of that has infiltrated into today's society. So it is what it is, and um, we're not worried about it. We're at peace with it because we utilize all of the scriptural stars and then some. Some people say, oh, forget about all this. Just use the first star in the first month of Abib, Spica, and you're good to go. Why take away? What's the fear? We challenge everyone to utilize all of the witnesses of light. There is no need to add and or take away. Taking away is a form of intercalation, which the manifest movements are famous for. The mother of all manifest movements is the second Babylon, known as the beast, the Roman Catholic Church. So here we are, the night before New Moon Day in my location. So the moon did greet the sun at sunset. Doesn't do that for a first day scenario every given month, but it happened for me last evening. Getting into the first watch... There are the scriptural stars, and there are more, Capella, Aldebaran, Betelgeuse, etc. Uh, and that moon is starting to become a moon or a light on a lampstand for all in the house to see. When it gets to its 180-degree mark, between the second and third watch, for me it was just 12 minutes after midnight last evening, and there are those stars all the way to the start of a true scriptural day start, Dawn, first light, first day, ninth month, Thursday, December 8th, the pagan day. There's those signs again. And if I put in the atmosphere, and we highly encourage people to do this all through the years, and some people fail to do it. But anyways, here you, here you are. There's those signs again for a first day, ninth month, even in my area. Hallelujah. So, um... Not a big deal, right? Moon did greet the sun at sunrise for my area. But again, if you're waiting for the sunrise only, the Egyptian day start tradition of their world religious system, it can be problematic. Tree lines, building lines, uh, geographical lines, topography, mountains, valleys, etc. So pretty basic, uh, if you will. So again, a true scriptural day start, just like Hanok said, till the sun rises over against her. The sunlight, the sun, the, it, it rises over. Now, if you don't get out and see this all the time, you're missing, you're missing a wonderful sight because you can see the stars as well, which give you the whole picture, the signs. If you're just waiting for a lunar solar approach, it's problematic and you will cause division. Again, we're not judging anybody. We did this. It was our mistake. We've repented of that and we share more witnesses now which give people more, let's just say, evidence to stand on. The whole light, not just parts of it. So, all the best to you and your loved ones in the name which is above all names, Yahuwah, the only self-existent one, our Father of Lights. 
And may the Messiah Yahushua be in everything we say and do on this first day of the ninth month, which commenced on the pagan day at the dawn of Thursday, December 8th, 2022. All the best, everyone. Have a awesome day.